I had just uh, done a short of introduction, but not fully because I think that part was left for you to do. So please welcome uh, in, uh, in 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 your in your welcome remark. You probably may have to introduce the project, the genesis of it, and why we we felt it's very important to have the youth to be part of the project from the beginning before we commence the. Uh, the research bit of it, and also the holistic, uh, I mean, overview of the project. So, Prof, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Whitecliff and uh, colleagues, and it's nice to have everyone here. Um, I was lot shared and trying to connect. However, I think it would be good if uh, everyone introduces themselves in one form or the other, so we know who we are meeting. Uh, I'm Peg Moyo. I uh, direct the Center on African Philanthropy and Social Investment here at the Vest Business School. Um, so thank you everyone for taking time to send your inputs, uh, make submissions to the criteria that we circulated. So this is a MasterCard funded uh, project uh, that we are partnering with a number of partners from across the continent. It's a research project that is that aims to establish the extent to which the nonprofit sector, and we can define the nonprofit sector in different ways depending on where you are located and the different uh, legal jurisdictions. But essentially, we're talking about anything other than the state and the family or the private sector. So, civil society broadly and its various formations is what we'll be referring to here as the nonprofit sector. And so, we are really interested to find out the extent to which it creates jobs as well as opportunities for young Africans in the continent. But those jobs are not just any jobs, it's supposed to be dignified uh, jobs or fulfilled, fulfilled jobs. And we are going to get back to young people again and ask them what their understanding of dignified jobs uh, means or refers to. Um, you know, so we do have our own definition, but we want to also understand what it would mean for you as a young person if somebody said, I'm creating a decent job, is dignified, is fulfilling. What does that mean to you? And so the project is divided into three elements. The first part is the research. Like I said, we are focusing on 17 countries, five in Southern Africa, five in West, five in East, and two in North Africa. Uh, and those countries, I think they were listed, but I will just go through them quickly. So in Southern Africa, we are interested in understanding uh, dynamics in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, in DRC, and Mozambique. In East Africa, we are interested in Ethiopia, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. In West Africa, is Burkina Faso, uh, is Cote d'Ivoire, is Senegal, is Ghana, and Nigeria. And uh, in North Africa, is Egypt and Morocco. Uh, and those are countries that, uh, in one form or the other, were chosen based on either the dynamism of young people, the vibrancy of the nonprofit sector, our own uh, capacity and um, networks in those countries, but also the extent to which uh, MasterCard Foundation is heavily involved in some of those countries. So that's the first part, which is the research. Basically, we would want to involve young people, uh, talk to them and understand the various ways in which they want to be engaged, how they are employed, but also their own understanding of dignified uh, jobs. These, and that will lead to um, all sorts of products, uh, some of which will include publications, others will include uh, you know, opinion pieces, policy inputs. We, we are also going to host regional uh, convenings uh, in different regions in East Africa, West, North, uh, Southern, we are also going to open up the space for young people to participate either as part, as part of the country partners in terms of research, data gathering, analysis, but also as uh, objects of study as well, jointly with the nonprofit sector. Once the findings are out, we would also run a competition where we would want young people to take the findings and, and package them in ways that will be easily accessible, but also relevant to young Africans. Um, then the second part of the, of the program involves us uh, training 20 young people 
uh, through a doctoral program, uh, either at CAPSI or in the countries where the program is related. And we would want those young people to, to focus on issues that the pro project is focusing on, whether it's nonprofit studies, uh, youth studies, uh, behavioral sciences, among others. And the idea is that we will train these people for a period of five years. They will be funded fully uh, in terms of scholarships. We're looking at each person funded at a tune of about 30,000 US dollars a year. Uh, and over five years, it means we are funding each person uh, with a tune of 150,000 US dollars to study in any of the African universities where the project is located. And then the third component of, I mean, obviously as part of that, we would, would also make sure that we mentor these young people. We run uh, lots of activities that include workshops, uh, some of which uh, some of you might be familiar with our PhD workshops, but also um, you know, making sure that we expose them and connect them to other networks uh, from across the continent and beyond. So from a mobility uh, uh, part of things, we would want to make sure that you are exposed to different universities, different disciplines, but um, with the view that you form partnerships uh, that would allow people to grow in the area of uh, youth studies, nonprofit management, among others. And then the third component is a is some kind of a platform that we are working with, uh, and we'll try and see how we can also collaborate with some of the technology based institutions to develop a platform where we can easily match uh, young people's interest, young people's desires, young people's needs with the uh, supply side, which will be the nonprofit. Uh, sector. So if you think about it, it's a place where if you are looking for a job, you are looking for a consultancy, you have a company, but you want it to be funded, you are looking for investment, you will go to this site. And for the nonprofit sector side, whether it's foundations, it's corporate institutions, if they are also looking for demand, then they are going to uh, go to this very same site and place their jobs the opportunities that exist for young people. And so that becomes a place to go to for both the nonprofit sector and young people. So that's essentially the, the project as in, in short, and uh, I'm sure we can share some of the documentation uh, with those that might be interested. But we just didn't want to implement this without your, your involvement. And so we wanted to make sure that when we then go to the country partners and we say, you implement this project in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, in Mozambique, et cetera. There's a, there's, a, there's a document that guides everyone in terms of how to engage young people in that country. And so this criteria that was shared with you was a beginning to develop some kind of guideline for everyone who will be implementing this project to, to use it as a guide whenever they thinking of engaging a young person, they will have to go back to that document and say, who are the young people that we must engage? How do we engage them at what level, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's really where we are coming from. And so I would invite my colleague then, uh, Wycliffe, to take us through what came out of, the, of your inputs and the analysis that he has come up with. So that at the end of today, we are able to then say we have a document that has also benefited from inputs uh, from young people. So the inputs were at two levels. One was you know, at the level of a questionnaire that was circulated. Secondly, we also asked for people to submit their written um, you know, inputs. And then the third level is where we are now meeting to then consider the outcomes of that. And so Wycliffe, if I think I would, uh, I would hand it over to you. I will hang around here in case there are questions uh, that might uh, relate to the entire project. Then I would answer them. Over to you. So, uh, like Prof Moyo has, 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 has alluded, we sent out two separate but very um, similar, I mean similar but not the same uh, document out. One was to find out information in a quantitative manner on how youths would want this project to proceed. Another one was more of a qualitative way on how the, the personal opinions that uh, they would write to tell us about how the project is. 
So what I'm going to present now is a short information, a short derivative that we have out of the um, out of the out of the, the the quantitative aspect of the of the of the work that we sent out. So I'm just going to share my screen to have this conversation. Please um, confirm if you can see my screen. We can. All right, thank you. Yeah, so like Prof Moyo has ably uh, introduced the project. So Capsi and MasterCard uh, partnered uh, to, to, to conduct uh, on a project that is focused on 17 countries. And I think Prof has done justice to tell us why the 17 countries were chosen. And of course, the, the project is aimed at uh, promoting dignified employment for the medical youth. So we sent out questions that were asking youth, maybe let me share with you the questions first before, for those for the benefits of those who did not uh, perhaps see those, uh, uh, see the, I mean, who did not get take part in this. Uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the survey, so I'm, I'm just going to get the. The survey, I mean, the questions and then from there we're going to also look into the the, the reports that we got out of the questions that we shared okay you got it. It's coming. Please confirm if my screen is with you. Okay. So for those of you perhaps who got a chance to look into this, so this is this is this is this was the document that uh, invited you, and the document uh, underscores or, or or defines what the project is, and out of that elaborate document, which we are not going to go into, <clears throat> we ask you to to tell us a, a, a bit on the criteria of which of how you want to be included in the study. So. The questionnaire would sort to the approach for developing criteria for selecting youths involved in the project. So we also needed names, but that was not was supposed to be so mandatory because at the end of the day, anonymity is very important in such projects. Then do you agree on these components of the project? All these has been have been directly, I mean, lifted from the agreement between CAPC and, and MasterCard Foundation. So we categorized <clears throat> from that conversation, uh, from that uh, agreement with MasterCard Foundation. And out of that, we wanted you to tell us how you feel in, by, by telling, I mean, by clicking on which is the most important, whether you agree that we should include people with disabilities or uh, people with uh, I mean, teenagers, teen, we, we should pro prefer more to include the teen mothers in the project. And as the list goes down, including the refugees and ex-convicts, and we have the results already, which I'll show you next. And we also asked you to specify, and you'll see how this one played out. It, it, was, it didn't come out so well. The next question we asked you, how should the research tool and methods be designed? This is more mainly uh, intended to be intended to, 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 to bring in your opinions for those who perhaps understand the research process, how the surveys should be designed, how whether you should use key informants, we can use youth instructing, I mean, centric participants, research tools. So this now becomes to probably what are, are become the mechanics of conducting the research. But more importantly, what we were interested in, what issues 
should be considered a defining, dignified, and fulfilling job. Because this is <clears throat> or of livelihoods. This is this is this is the kind of, of this is of this project. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, like Prof Moyo has said, we want to see how is this project go, product, the product of this project going to be translated into reality. But before we get there, what are the critical needs, what, 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 what do people, in the youth in Africa, consider as what is better livelihood, right? And do they consider education? Do they consider access to food, shelter, and, and health care? Do, do they consider, for those, especially those who come, who, who perhaps are ex-convicts, uh, perhaps are back to the society, if do they, if we have to prioritize them, do we start by reintegrating them and rehabilitating them, giving them supporting services into the society, or do you only consider that the income generating, uh, I mean, uh, opportunities or ventures that are more important to them in terms of uh, better livelihood in Africa, and so we also. This one we also put according to categories, and we will see the results, how the results play out. So the categories here include the young people with disabilities, young women, young men because of the, the gender equality, the refugees. We, we've already we have a category for that. The other side has already ex-convicts, displaced communities, teen mothers, LGBTQ plus community, orphans, young people. So the last the, the last one, actually number four, question four and five are more or less the same, one and the same thing. How can marginalized youths, including the teenagers, all those categories we have put up there, be, be inclusively and meaningfully involved in designing a unified and fulfilling jobs in Africa? Do we then trade with them directly? Do we, um, do we incorporate them, their livelihood experiences? You know, Do we have mentorship to, and, and support networks? Tailored, and do we empower them through skills training? So I think this, this, and the results that I'm going to present here, these are probably some of the issues that needed to inform our conversation as we go along with this. Okay, with that, I think that provides you with a bit of the background on what we are seeking from the youth. Now let's go ahead to share with you the results that we found out of the short survey that we carried out. So I decided to not belabor you so much. Like I said earlier, for those of you who you were in here earlier, I decided not to belabor you so much with the, the nitty-gritties and, and intrigues of, of these uh, questions. I wanted, I, I just wanted to, to go into the responses on the priority areas. So we found that, I mean, if you can see this graph, it's not well labeled, but it gives us a bit of a picture of what's coming out. So from this graph, from my end as a researcher, it it gives it sort of gives me a problem because it looks like among the 17 countries that we got the responses from, looks like uh, on aggregate all these factors or all these uh, uh, issues that or the definition of priority areas that Mastercard Foundation and CAPSI had, uh, had put in the project are important to the youth. And because we do not we do not get any specificity on the other, which was very important. If we had some specificity on the other, where people are writing other, let's this and that, then that would give us a leeway to say, okay, think, let's now have a way of trying to incorporate the other into the mainstream conversation that Capsi and Mastercard Foundation have put together. From what we can see, um, there is overwhelming majority who agree that the project should prioritize people with disabilities. The same way the project should also include the ex-convicts. You understand? So we have 81% of the total combined or aggregated outcomes from all the countries that were involved in the, in the survey, accepting that we should be focusing on the disabilities. At the same time, 
the ex-convicts are also considered at 64%. What does that leave us with? Obviously, that's perhaps the main reason why we have this conversation here. So we get to settle on this. Who, where, and what's the category who do we prioritize? And more than that, how do we get into that? Okay? So, like I said, I mean, this is now more for, for, uh, for discussion. So the findings obviously tell us some insight into the perspective of African youth on which group should be prioritized by the, by the Capsi Massacre Foundation project. However, we found some variances in different countries. Like uh, if, if I can go into the main analysis, we found that in Zimbabwe, for instance, they were more interested into the young mothers, right? When we go to, 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 to Kenya, for instance, they were more in, interested in people with disabilities. If we went to Nigeria, they are, they are more interested in to integrating the ex-convicts into society in terms of the percentage variations. So, and then that, that's perhaps why you can see those graphs are almost a par if you consider them together. So it looks like there's a very high level of agreement on the importance of prioritizing young people with disabilities and the marginalized groups, which underscore the alignment of the project's main objective. However, we cannot take this as the face value that this is the only target demography that we are going to use for it. I think these insights uh, give us just some snippets on the strategies and the intervention that perhaps we need to include to ensure that, uh, that we get the, the, need, the, the priorities of the youth and what they aim to serve with this project going forward. So like I said earlier, sorry, I'm a Kenyan and in Kenya we do say so early. So we didn't speak in Swahili. So like I said earlier, I didn't want to belabor you. I wanted this, 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 the, the, the organic aspect or the organic nature of, of how we planned this project, this discussion to be, to be more discussion oriented. So after with that, I'm, I'm sort of going to open the forum. Asanteni, Asanteni means thank you in plural. Asante means thank you in singular. So I'll say Asanteni and at the end of that, that presentation, that short presentation. So like I said 